It's like, think about this from the perspective of like the Pharisees, the religious leaders. You're trying to lock up the apostles and you're trying to throw them in prison because you think that the power of this movement is flowing from them. And you think if we can just lock these guys up, then the movement is gonna be over. Let's get the leaders. And then you turn around and there's a bunch of priests who are being converted to Christianity. And there's this murmur kind of running through the town of this guy who's doing these signs and wonders. And you find out that the guy who's causing all of this commotion is the soup kitchen guy. Like, I love that. Like, think about that from the perspective of them. Like, it's hilarious. Like, the warrior that is, like, slashing your ranks. He's, like, gutting you from the inside of your organization Who is at the front of this movement? Who is the tip of the spear that is moving forward with courage and power and signs and wonders? It's essentially the lunch lady, okay? Like, that's what it's saying. And and I'm, I'm serious about that. Like, this should do a few things for us. Like, it should cause us to, like, rethink some things. First, it should mean that we should not get swept up into this idea that is not a Christian idea. It is the world's idea that the only positions of influence and power and value are positions of authority. That's not a Christian idea. That is the world's idea. And we should get that out of the church and out of our minds. One of the most influential and powerful people in the early church was the man serving the soup. He wasn't busy climbing to the top of the organization. He was busy climbing to the bottom He wasn't trying to get the head seat at the table, but he was waking up early to help fix the food so that he could serve everyone at the table. And this is not a lesser role in the kingdom of God. But Stephen is doing exactly what Jesus told him to do if he wanted to be great in the kingdom. Jesus says, if you want to be great, then be the servant of all. And we shouldn't be stunned when people who obey what Jesus tells them to do actually get the thing that Jesus promised to give them. So Stephen climbs down beneath everyone else. He serves the tables. And he's the first Christian we see that is so spiritually dangerous and powerful that God's enemy's only course of action against him is to kill him. It's the first thing we should see. Your role and position in the kingdom isn't what's important. What is important is whether you are someone who is filled with the Spirit of God or not. Your position and role doesn't matter. Your spiritual power is what matters, and Stephen had power. 